Welcome to the October Houston Color Coaching Meetup Group. Say hi, everybody. Hi. hi. There you go. Um, today, we're talking about uncluttered home for the holidays. Are you decorating or celebrating? I wanted to talk about uh, the holiday season because, of course, it's about to start, right? Like, Halloween's right around the corner, and then the three-month run out to January has begun. And so... Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can experience a slightly less stressful holiday by decluttering your objects and your gift giving and your decorating and your scheduling to make it a little bit less stressful, a little bit more fun, a little bit more family friendly, a little bit more entertaining instead. Do you have a question already? No. Oh, thank God. Okay. <laughs> I didn't say anything already, so awesome. Okay, so we all love the holidays, right? And let me just say, I'm sure I'm talking about Thanksgiving and Christmas, and those are American holidays, and uh, Christmas being a Christian holiday, but it, uh, it applies to the holiday season in general. Any time where your family has a tradition around um, gathering together and celebrating something and has all sorts of traditions around it, that's really what I'm talking about. So thank you for um, allowing space for all those options. So we all love the holidays as kids, right? And we all have memories tied up around them, and it was all so much fun decorating, and here's all the lovely gifts, and here's all the wonderful treats, and those are all our fabulous <coughs> memories. And conveniently for us, we didn't realize at the time how much effort went into making all those magical memories happen and how much work was involved. So we are blissfully ignorant when we are imprinted with the need for all those memories and then we grow up as adults, and it's time to try to execute those for our own families, and we want to make that happen for our own families. And suddenly we realize that we have this huge to-do list of things to do to make the magic for the kids, right? To make all the appropriate things happen. And it's a list that's way longer than anybody wants to carve into their schedule these days, right? Mm -hmm. A big part of the holiday labor is decorating. Um, aside from the fact that we all like to buy, 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 by definition, as Americans, we're big buyers, right? So one of the things we buy is decorations. And right now, you're buying Halloween decorations and Thanksgiving decorations and Christmas decorations. And every store you go into, they're trying to sell you their version of decorations. And if you've had a space or been shopping for the holidays for more than, you know, a year, you have plenty of decorations already. And adding into the pile just makes it that much bigger, right? And yet, it's always very tempting. It all looks so good in the store, right? You must need to add to your collection, but we always have a huge collection already. We tend to overdo it for the kids. We're trying to conform to family tradition. Sometimes we do it because Christmas shopping is like the perfect excuse for our inner compulsive shopper to come out and, you know, take rain, take hold. We all think Christmas is a permission forgiving time. Like, I don't normally buy all this stuff, but at Christmas time, I really have to buy all this stuff because it's a gift-giving season. And so that gives me permission to sort of go overboard, right? It's not really a good plan, but it is one of the things that we do, one of the ways that we give ourselves permission to overbuy in, in the holiday season. And also, it just makes it more stressful. If, you, if you're adding, 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 decorating, gift-giving, activities, all of those things, if the list gets longer, it, you're just making your life more stressful. And, and there's a way to experience it and not have it be quite as overboard. I do want to tell a story about a friend of mine who's, um, whose husband died recently after, I guess he was sick for three years. So she was a caregiver for some period of time. And um, she is in her mid to late 70s. And she was the matriarch of a very large family. She had several kids. They were all married and had kids. There was grandkid, great grandkids as well. It was a huge compound. And for some reason, she was the one in charge of all of the holiday celebrations. It was always at her house. And I guess part of that was that she was an interior decorator, and it was a lot of fun for her. She liked to cook. So the execution of the big holiday to do was fun for her, except the year that her husband died, it wasn't because she was sad. And she was in her mid-60s, and the idea of trying to lay out the holiday cheer for 40-plus people was really overwhelming to her. And so she sent an email out to her family and said, 
hi, not up to it this year. I would like to pass the baton to someone else in the family and let somebody else be in charge now. I've done it for my adult lifetime. It's time to send it on to the next person in line. And her family completely freaked out. <laughs> like, whoa! They all came unglued that grandma was not going to do this big spread. It's like, She's in her late 70s. How long did you guys think she was going to be up for this? Like, yeah. did you think she was going to be making the turkey until she dropped dead in the kitchen? Like, that was come on! <laughs> yeah, with a little, right? with a little, <laughs> little extra, you know, yeah. So, I, I was really proud of her that she declared, I am now done with the whole party action. Somebody else needs to take over because I don't have the strength for it anymore. And I think it really would have benefited her family if she had been transitioning them for some time. Like, if she had been including them in the preparations at her house, having them help her do the cooking, you know, doling out some of the, the tasks to other members of the family, and trying to include them into the workload so that it was less work for her and they were sort of trained for it. A transition. Yeah, but that had not taken place, and she completely, it, she, she might as well have thrown a bomb into the room and blown it up in front of her family. They were all very, very distressed about it. But it's an example of the Christmas tradition was she was in charge of that. She was in charge of the party for 40 at her house with all the decorations and all the food and all the stuff, and they showed up for the party. It's like, well, yeah, that works when the hostess is 40, but not when she's 75, right? It's not the same thing. So that was one of the things that I was very proud of her that she took care of herself and said, I'm done. And I was really irritated with the family that they all freaked out about it. But it, I'm sure that they have worked it out and it'll all be fine. But it, but it was such a shock because she had held on to the reins very tightly for a long time. And I think the result was they were unprepared to take it over when she was ready to be done. And the question is, are your family holiday traditions a source of joy, or do they feel like a burden? And for her, they were feeling like a burden. They reached a point where it was too much to do. So what could you do differently? Every aspect of the season can be trimmed down so that it's less work for you. They might include some old habits. Maybe the traditions that you have been doing for a long time include some old habits. The old habit in my family is my little sister always wants green bean casserole. Right, somehow, green, and we're all like, we're sick of green bean casserole. <laughs> and so now she makes it for herself because it's <laughs> nobody else wants it. It's a tradition that they're ready to let go of, and she's still hanging on to that one. So there's always some traditions that are just habits that maybe everybody's sick of that you could let go of this year and not have to do them. And wouldn't that be awesome? What if you spent, I want to read this out loud, what if you spent the holidays in the spirit of family and celebration instead of overwhelmed by the stuff that doesn't matter? So let's talk about some tips for clutter-free season, ways to simplify and streamline your holidays. So I'm going to go down the list. For decorating, you know what I'm going to say about decorating, right? What am I going to say? Keep it simple. <laughs> yeah. Then down the collection of decorations to include only your favorites. So simplify is exactly right. And one of the biggest things that I do when I go in people's houses and I'm digging open the closet and find the Christmas decorations. Like people have whole closets, half the garage, the shed in the back are all full of Christmas decorations, right? And when you start pulling it all out and usually the person's like, ah, don't make me look at it all. Like, yeah. <laughs> No, we're looking at it all. <laughs> and you pull it all out in the living room floor, and they're like, oh my God, I had no idea. Well, you've been buying Christmas decorations every year for 25 years. You're going to have a big collection, right? Like, there's nothing you can do about that. So, it's one of the things that's easy to slim down. Find, pull your favorites, because you know that there's some stuff that you bought one moment when you were, like, having a hemorrhage, and you bought something really ugly and stupid you would never put out, right? <laughs> Everybody does compulsive, oh my god, it's on sale, exactly, it's on sale, I must need to buy this, right? There's always things that can be pulled out completely and gotten rid of. And you can also thin down so that you're making a plan for the smallest amount of decorating possible. So that maybe instead of 14 trees in the house, maybe you're only going to have one tree. <laughs> 
Or maybe instead of a huge tree, you're buying a smaller tree. Or maybe you're not adding all the things on the walls. Or maybe you're not changing out the towels for Christmas towels or, you know, whatever, right? <laughs> I had a friend who lives in Michigan, and she is seriously into Christmas. And they start listening to Christmas carols in August. So she's like playing Christmas Carol tapes in the car in August, which when she was started telling me this, I was like, really? Oh, we love Christmas carols. We started listening to them in August. Okay. So I was invited to her home in Michigan one year, and I went up there for the Christmas regalia. And they had gone a two-story two house with a basement, and they had removed every piece of art off the wall, every tchotchke off of every surface, everything in the house was replaced with something Christmas. There was so much stuff that they resurfaced the entire house with Christmas and there was still stuff in the basement that they had put out. And so it was a huge undertaking for them. And I, I haven't been in contact with her for probably five or six years, so I don't know whether they're still doing it at that level, but they've got, the kids have grandkids now, and so they're still a family of little kids that would participate in Christmas, and I don't know how much effort she's putting into it. But it was a remarkable transformation of her home into a Christmas store. And I consider that the extreme level of decorating. And there's, you know, Ed de does not decorate at all in his apartment. <laughs> so that's the other extreme. And so somewhere in between those two extremes is some place that is, you know, a little bit of Christmas cheer and doesn't have to make you want to slit your wrist trying to put it all up, right? So... Maybe you can plan in advance. I normally decorate these 15 surfaces, but maybe I'll only decorate eight this year, right? My mother has shrunk the tree down to one that she can reach. <laughs> it's like she didn't, she didn't want to crawl on to step on any steps to decorate, so the tree's down where she can top, do the top, and she does one little thing over the mantle, and she hangs a big wreath on the top of the garage, and someone else does that. We hire that out. And um, that's the end of it. Like, it's, she doesn't put a huge blast of an effort in because it, she didn't want to spend her time that way anymore. She just, there's not little kids in her house, clearly. And she doesn't want to waste her time that way. So you can make a plan for a smaller level of decoration and hopefully um, trim down your to-do list, right? Here's the hard one, as Ann was telling me stories about shopping today. Um, don't add anything new this year. Tis the season, you go walking through all the stores, here's all the new decorating options at Marshall's and Macy's, and everybody has their, oh, look at the cute Christmas tchotchke to hang, to sit, to you know, put on the tree. Maybe you can just go, gee, I have two decades of Christmas in my house already, and I don't need to buy any this year. I can just walk through the store and go, oh, isn't that pretty? Someone got paid to build that tree. And then you can walk away with nothing in your hand, right? It can be a goal that you can not add. You can consider your stock adequate and not anything this year. And then you're not trying to put away one more piece of Christmas. You're not trying to find one more surface to put something on. And the last advice about this is, Take time to experience other people's holiday decorations in lieu of doing it yourself, right? So people go and watch the, the um, Christmas, the lights going on in Post Oak, for instance, when they turn off all the palm trees and all the hoo-ha and make a big party out of it. Well, there's a party somebody else is throwing that you don't have to do yourself, right? You can go hang out and watch and have a good time. Oh, zoo lights. Um, somebody told me about the lights at the zoo. Or at the right? zoo, do they yeah. do that too? Well, yeah. there you go. Yeah. There's it's the neighborhood that people draw mm -hmm. through, drive through where the neighborhood puts a big effort into doing it. Mm -hmm. And if they're willing to, you know, spend all those hours putting the lights up, I'm happy to drive by and look at them and go ooh and ah and then drive home again, right? <laughs> My house isn't decorated like that, but if somebody else wants to do that, awesome, and I will be an admirer. So it's a way that you can change your focus instead of putting your own out, go ooh and awe somebody else's. Yes, ma'am. Have you seen what some of the people are doing for Halloween decorations <laughs> and things that is? They are getting bigger and fluffier, aren't they? Oh, like yeah, inflated ones. Exactly. and like they're frequently a, lit up. Yeah, it's right? Like a 16-foot tall black cat over on <laughs> North Boulevard. <laughs> it's insane. But that's just, it's like, you know, people are willing to decorate. Yeah. 
They're willing to decorate. They spend, you know, it's like another way that the company can make money. Now, instead of Christmas Santas, they're making 16-foot black cats to put in front of your yard. And Halloween yeah. lights. Yeah. Well, people yeah, want yeah, to decorate. Oh, yeah. It's just yeah. getting yeah. an excuse and something to decorate with. What if it's across down the street the on the way in? That's mm -hmm. black Christmas. Like crazy? Oh, my gosh. I guess everybody has their favorite holiday, right? Yeah. Parkway. Yeah. I'm not that person. I don't want to climb around in the house and hang the lights up. Yeah. That's the thing. I don't want to be the one that's nailing stuff up on the wall. I came through well, so ropes and there was a place. They had three, they had the huge cat, and then they had this ghost that's about 20 feet tall with a spider about six feet tall in front of it, and then it had another blow up something on the other side. It was just well, and you know, one thing that's maybe happening too, the, the super <coughs> elaborate stuff in really nice neighborhoods, they hire that out. Right. Like, they they're not saying it themselves, they're so paying yeah. somebody to go install it all, right? So, um, all of us have the capacity to hire a team to come make our house look like a show. So, we can just go find those shows and admire this money that they spent on making their house look fabulous, right? That's a less stressful way for you to enjoy decorations and not have to be the one climbing on the ladder. Talk about gift giving. You should do that as a child. What's that? Money was tight in my family, so we would drive around and look at the Christmas lights. Yeah, because it's a um, cool yeah. thing to do, with a, and you do it as a family, right? It's a great family activity. No, my siblings are a lot older than me. My sister, my dad, and I, maybe my mom, my brother. Well, but enough of you went that it was felt like a family activity, right? Yeah. Yeah. You go and that people take their little kids too and drive around looking at the lights. How cool, right? There's something in North Carolina. They take these uh, balls and they that are lit up and they shoot them into the tree somehow with some kind of like Nerf gun or something. <laughs> they do it, but it's so all of the, there's a whole neighborhoods that have these Christmas balls hanging up way up in these tall pine trees that they've shot in there with this gun. So we usually go around and look at everybody's you know things. Hanging on the wall. I'm not doing that either. Okay, so let's talk about gift giving. So one of the ways that you can make gift giving more um, clutter free, I guess is the best way to say it, is to give experiences instead of objects. That's a real obvious one. Like, little kids, it, it, let me qualify by saying it, this probably doesn't work for little, little kids. But anybody that's teenager on up and the moms in the room can tell me you know, what the age break should be, but Generally, anybody that's teenagery up can appreciate tickets, registrations, like they want to go to some conference, they want to take a trip. You can buy airplane tickets, you can give money for um, here's spending money because you know that the class is going on some trip in February, and you can give spending money for the trip. You can, my, my favorite one is a, a massage at the Local Masha's place, they have a, uh, it's a monthly recurring, right? So that was a gift for me that I get a massage every month. What? Yes, ma'am. Um, two Christmases ago, I was trying to figure out what to get my teenage son, and Groupon had a helicopter flying lesson. Oh. For like 90, I mean, like, you know, Cheap. 90, like half price. What yeah, would, yeah, yeah. Would be. And that was just the best gift that ever. You know, Ever. And see, the thing about that is, because he was a he was a teenager, he could. It wasn't something he had to play with that moment. He could anticipate the fun that he was going to have in the future. Yeah. And the little kids can't get that connection between <laughs> now and the future. But he was old enough to make that connection. My sister bought my bro brother in law one time a uh, NASCAR driving experience. Oh, yeah. So he got to go drive a race track or race car around the track. And, you know, like, what else are you going to give a 50-year-old guy that he's going to do a happy dance about but driving the race car around the track, right? So that was a perfect thing. She spent the money. She bought the gift. He had the experience. It was fun. But there was no tchotchke in the house as a result, right? There's a million ways. People that are into crafts go to retreats all the time, right? And hang out with other people that are crafty. You can pay their registration to go to some retreat. If they want to go listen to a lecture or listen to somebody speak or a concert. There's a million things that you can buy that are specifically interesting to that person that don't leave them with a thing at the end, right? Oh, the quilt show. The quilt, quilt show, show, exactly. Yeah. For non-quilters, that's a really great thing. Things to go watch and, you know, give them spending money. Jewelry. Jewelry. Give perishables. 
like food and drink, right? People, you know, there's people that like to drink wine, they like to drink beer, you can buy fancy stuff. There's ways to give them uh, food and any kind of a drink that then they drink it or eat it and it's gone, but they appreciate the gift that you spent the money on it. One of the things that we do is we buy, now this is sort of bad, but my dad likes to smoke cigars at, at night. He, you know, he smokes at the end of the day. Jen, <laughs> but he likes to smoke a cigar at the end of the day, and so he buys, you know, inexpensive cigars, and so as a gift, we buy him really expensive ones, so that he, every once in a while, he gets to smoke a good one. Right? <laughs> not that I could, there, it's all smoking, so I'm not sure how one's better than the other, but he thinks it is, so that's a gift that he really appreciates. He's not willing to spend a huge amount of money on cigars for himself, but it's okay for us to buy him cigars that are nice, and he appreciates them. So... Perishables, plants, for instance. Lots of times they make pretty, you know, here's the bulbs that are going to bloom at Christmas time or whatever. And they. Amaryllis. Yeah, exactly. You can buy them and have them bloom for the season and then they get up, you know, they, they either go plant it somewhere, they throw it out, exactly, and they're done for the year. But that's a nice thing for somebody to get and be able to look at all season long and you're not leaving it with a tchotchke at the end, right? Focus on a few special and carefully chosen items instead of going for volume. So here's my story about this. Um, I had a client who, they were a couple and they had one little girl and she was about eight. And so you can imagine the only grandchild for four grandparents, right? So you know what Christmas looked like at their house. So they would give her the circulars for all the stores. So here's Walmart and here's Target and here's Macy's and, and tell her circle what you want. And then for some reason, the grandparents considered this a challenge to accomplish all of that. <laughs> like they would go buy everything that she circled. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is a suggestion list. This is not an order form, <laughs> right? She doesn't need all of this stuff. And so as a result, they were overwhelmed in little kids' toys that were pink and purple and girls with hair and horses and you know there was stuff <laughs> everywhere and then they would they would have bought everything and so then they'd start buying all the accessories and so then she had Barbie village and the horse village and the you know <laughs> there was all this stuff that went with it right and it's, oh come on they were drowning in little plastic kid toys it's much better now the kid won't tell you that right the kid will not say buy me less buy me less but your, the kid's parents will say, thank you, mother, thank you. If you, as a grandparent, buy nice quality stuff in a smaller volume instead of every single thing the kid could possibly want, or everything that you think is a good idea because you're a grandparent and you want your kids to have everything, right? You want the grandkids to have it all. I know that being the grandmother is like the international license to shop. It's the reason that everybody thinks that they can guilt-free shop. And so, stop, stop. Think of your child. <laughs> Try to dial it down. And it's true for your friends as well. Your friends don't want 47 gifts. They want something that you thoughtfully associated with, you, with them that you put some effort into and maybe spend a little bit of money to have one thing nice or two things nice instead of 37 things for them to open, half of which will be like, oh yeah, and they'll be putting it aside and for the goodwill bin, or paying me five years from now to take out of their house. <laughs> you don't want to buy those gifts. <laughs> Choose gifts that are portable, A, and easily wrapped or bagged. So when you're standing there in front of the Barbie castle that's massively huge and really pokey, you know, how do you wrap something like that, right? You want to buy this stuff for, if you want to reduce your stress level, you want to be thinking about how it can be wrapped when you're trying to purchase it. So that you're making, putting some thought into, is this going to be a pain in my behind to try to wrap this up? Or is this going to be easy for me to manage? Let that be one of your purchasing criteria. I mean, I said give spending money for an upcoming trip. You can also give donations to a charity that the person cares about. So, um, my mother volunteers for a, a bell contract group. She's on the board. It's a singing group, and she's really, she was in choruses all of her life, and that's important to her. So she one year said, I want you guys for my birthday, actually she asked for it, I want you guys to give donations to the chorus on my behalf. That's, I don't need more tchotchkes in the house. Give money to the chorus. Awesome. We can do that. Now, granted, that's probably not going to work with a teenager, 
<laughs> but there are adults in your life for which saying, you know, what is your favorite charity? What is important to you? Can I, you know, I'm going to make a donation to them on your behalf and let that be their gift. Maybe they don't want a whole bunch of more gigas, right? And you're going to spend the money anyway. It might as well go to a donation if the person doesn't want more stuff. And I found myself trying, um, when my grandparents were in their late 80s, it's like, what do you buy for somebody that is really, you know, that they were down to their little bitty small apartment and she's running an oxygen tank behind her. She's not clearly running around being active in her life anymore. She's going at a much slower speed. She does, she's got 70 years worth of clothes in her apartment. <laughs> what does she, what could she possibly need? And at that point, it isn't about adding more stuff to somebody's life. It's really about honoring them in some way that is meaningful, that doesn't involve, here is a Christmas sweater, here is a, you know, another vase, right? So perishables, food, and drink are perfect for that kind of, a massage would be great. That kind of service. Hire me to come and pay. You know, people buy me as a gift sometimes, and you have to be careful about that because that comes with the implied judgment, right? <laughs> I always have to say, okay, does the person know that you're buying this for them? You might want to ask them and see how insulted they are before you actually spend the money. So it, you do have to sort of give that one a, you know, be careful when you give services. But if you can aim for something that's fun or that they would find entertaining, then you should be okay. <laughs> Okay, so um, we can de-stress activities. One of them is to choose activities that include as many people as possible so that you do less activities but you have more interaction with the family and more things going on. So like the idea of driving around looking at the Christmas lights, you can pile everybody in the car to do that and go driving around and include a whole, a whole bunch of your holiday guests, a whole bunch of your family. You can spend some time interacting but it's not... It's instead of five different events with two with him and going around <coughs> with that one and hanging out with this one and going shopping with this one, you do one thing and it includes everybody and then it's less stress for you. You're only planning one thing, <coughs> right? Don't overbook. Even though it's holidays, there's still only 24 hours in a day, right? We tend to try to cram more things into our calendar during the holidays. But I think it's more important to attend the things that really sound fabulous to you, that seem like a really great idea. And if it's a maybe, don't try to add that. Don't crowd your schedule out. You're going to be adding things no matter what during the holiday season. You know you're going to add things to your already busy schedule. So you might as well only add the ones that are super easy, super exciting to you. And don't add everything that you get an S to or everything that's a maybe that might be interesting. If it's, it's on that level of the scale, don't bother. Save yourself the stress because it's just going to take more of your free time away, right? And you also make, and make an effort to try to do something new and different. Maybe it'll create a new holiday and it'll give it a little zing to I'm doing the same things over and over and over every year. It'll take some of the drudgery out. If you try to go do one thing that's completely different that the family's never done before, it'll give you a little, a little jazz from the sameness, the habitualness of the stuff that you've done before. Okay, so that's my prepared remarks. Who has questions? Who wants to talk about it? Yes, ma'am. Can you rent a pre-decorated tree? That's a good question. Can you? I'll Who knows you that? Can. In Houston, you can can you anything. rent a pre-decorated tree? Mm -hmm. well, that, they do, they do sell them pre-decorated sometimes. Yeah, I don't know if you can, read, if you can rent them. That's a very good question. Anybody that knows the answer to that should post it. Because <laughs> I don't know the answer to that. I want to go Google now, and I can't Google right now. Yes, ma'am. Well, I don't know the answer to that, but when you were talking about driving around looking at Christmas lights, I know, and probably you know this too, there is at least one company that will put you on one of their small buses, and they take you around. Oh. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's something jitney. You know, Jitney is the name for a small bus. And uh, they will drive you around in their Christmas carols, and you can get things like hot chocolate and cider on the Yeah, put that on oh. line when you find there. Is right, yeah, that would be fun. I can't think of the exact name of it right off, but I went on one once. And that way, nobody has to drive a car. Exactly. I mean, it's just, you know, 
Everybody gets to look? Yeah. Exactly. That's awesome. That's one of the memories I have of my grandmother, actually. One of the, la the, the this last Christmas that we had with her, that was one thing she requested. She's like, I want to go see Christmas lights. We're going to see Christmas lights. Yeah. Get in the car. Mm -hmm. And she sort of drug everybody along. But I was so glad that she did because we went in and around a nice neighborhood. And it was very fun. And, you know, you have crazy conversations in the car while that's going on, right? And it was a really great time that I spent with her. I really appreciated it. Oh, she's Googling for me. Okay, we'll, we'll show that when we're off the air. Save that for us. Thank you. Awesome. What else? Talk to me about Christmas decorations. Yes, ma'am. Well, one of the things I do is I have two boxes of decorations, and I have uh, decorated the boxes with uh, Christmas paper. And so what I do is I put those two boxes under the tree. Oh, that's smart. That was very smart. Decorating the containers to be Christmas decorations. I, I decorate the top because the top yeah. lifts off. Yeah, and yeah. that way you've got them right there and it's not going to be there forever. And That's awesome. That's, and particularly when people move, when I go in to pack when people move or when I am, um, when they're downsizing to like going from a house to a small apartment or when they're cleaning out the garage. I always come up against a huge collection of stash decorations everywhere. One of my clients had been in the house for, you know, 25 or 30 years, and she had just been buying more Christmas every year and sticking it on the shelf in the garage, and she had never pulled it all out. And when we pulled it all out, it was like, oh, wow, Christmas. this is a huge collection. <laughs> it's time to dial it down. Another suggestion is <clears throat> when you put the lights up, I always think, well, I need to buy lights because I know some of them have gone out. I just never know which ones. Right. Is to make a list or something when you've got the lights on the tree and then the day after Christmas or whenever you go to buy the lights, you'll have the list of how many reds and how many greens. And, you know. Exactly. So do you make the list while you're decorating and then go buy it when everything goes on sale. If possible. What a smart girl. She sounds organized, doesn't she? That's awesome. She's just an old hand with Christmas, apparently. But it's true for any, you know, now they, they create, the stores are creating decoration for everything. There's also, there's also an Easter pile. Everybody has an Easter pile, right? So, and there's St. Patrick's Day stuff comes out. It's like, if you want to decorate, you can have some decorations for anything. And the trick is to, how much do you want to churn that stuff? How much do you want to keep? Hopefully not 47 boxes, right? And it's a, it's a big use of storage to surrender an entire closet or a whole half of the garage to some storage space that you're not going to touch except once a year, right? Like you sort of carved out that whole part of your house to be useless for anything else if you completely step up with Christmas. Some people are real into it. If you're not one of those people, reduce your stress, thin the herd, right? Do you make a big decoration at Christmas time? Not as much. We do outdoor, my husband's in charge, uh, he does outdoor lights. We do a wreath on the door, the mantle, and the tree, and that's it. Yay. But the tree, this, I have like a, a nine foot tree and I'm gonna downsize this year because I always end up doing it all myself and it's too much. It's a big tall tree, it's that's a big, yeah. yeah. So the kids are in college or out of college now, so. You survived through all the growing up, right? <laughs> and now it's time for downsize number one, right? Right. Yes, ma'am. The the issue with that is that now, like, I have a brother who lives at home. And so when his son comes to visit his daddy, he's visiting grandma and grandpa too. Right. And so, you know, my mother has downsized the Christmas tree. But, and I things like Thanksgiving, Christmas, we do potluck, where my sister does some of it, I do some of it, mom does some of it. That's great, you're divvying up the work. Um, and then I live in a teeny tiny apartment. I mean, my apartment is this room and size of that room over there, and that's it. And I think I have two boxes for Christmas. That's good. And having the decorations match the size that you have to decorate is important. <laughs> Lots of people have way more stuff than equals the space. I have way more wrapping paper than I need. Well, 
You know what? I have made my mother every, for the last three years, I told her she cannot buy any more Christmas wrapping. We were using the wrapping she had. And I have not depleted the wrapping yet. Okay? She's been on wrapping moratorium for three years, and I have not, it's only just now more manageable in the box than it was before. And I'm like super generous trying to get rid of it, and it is not going fast, I have to tell you. Yes, ma'am. A cute idea that uh, I saw somewhere to get rid of that is to have a couple of friends or five <coughs> friends or do a, a come and go where you have some hot chocolate or whatever, but come and wrap gifts and during oh, the holidays. Then you can oh, get everybody to wrap uh -huh. So that's like a wrapping party. Exactly. And use each other's supplies and things. What mm -hmm. a great idea. So, I'll so you supply, the <laughs> right? But you supply the, you supply mm -hmm. all the wrapping and then your friends come with their gifts and sit and wrap and you can chat and drink wine while you wrap, if, right? If you want to supply <laughs> that, I mean, you can be share, share yeah. wrap or whatever Yeah, Bring that's awesome. <laughs> Bring your own wrap. I love that idea. Mm -hmm. But that's an experience that can include a whole bunch of your friends at once. <laughs> you can have fun. You can visit with everybody. And you're you're still getting the chore done, right? Of I gotta wrap these gifts before the holiday. And you can up it um, a level by making it a tree skirt theme, where everybody wears their tree skirt. <laughs> 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 That's oh, so cute. Isn't that fun? That's, That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> I like that idea, but I like that idea on a whole bunch of levels. One, you're using up supplies. Two, you're making an event that everybody can come to and participate. You can you have some social time in the season when people tend to want to interact with people more. You want to check in with your friends. You want to see how people are doing. And show off the tree skirt. <laughs> That's hilarious. I love it. That's awesome. Are you guys um, doing a whole lot of Halloween stuff? No? Yeah, I'm not a big Halloween person. I've got the one jack o' lantern in my front window. That's it. There you go. So what about travel? Do you have a lot of uh, travel plans at the holidays? What about the holidays do you find stressful? Hmm. Work. What about it? Just... Having to do any? Spread it, yeah. To, I just, you know, it, it takes away from the holidays. Yes, yeah. it does. Ten, if, depending on what kind of business, end a year, end a quarter, that affects a lot of different mm -hmm. industries. Right. And a lot of the industries are busier in the holiday season than, than, like some of them are dialing it down and some of them are ramping it up at Christmas time. I work retail. Yeah, retail uh, clearly uh, is a ramp up. It is <laughs> scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that's when people are at their worst. Yeah. Well, yes. and you know why? Everybody's tired and stressed out, right? Yeah. Like yeah. they're fighting for the Christmas gift and they're spending more money than they the should and minute. they're right. they're interacting with their uh, family members that are making them crazy and they're and the you know, they're trying to throw the party and the kids want something that they can't find and there's a million reasons why it makes people, you know, come to the edge of their rope and start to act badly. Yeah, I would not be comfortable in retail. We, we uh, bless you and pity you, and we're sorry that you have to suffer in this I'm way. I'm looking for a job right now, but that's generally what I do. Mm -hmm. so. There you go. Well, I guess that you, you have to get a skill set for dealing with people about that. I don't, it would be very hard. That would be really stressful for, <laughs> for me, too. For a dial to dial it down. Right. <laughs> you need to be no, quiet. What you do is you have to remember to, one, breathe. Yeah, and yeah, to yeah. realize that everybody is stressed out, everybody is over the edge, and most people are spending money <laughs> they don't have. I know, and isn't so, that crazy? Like, Why in my do that? family, we do like for a few years, we had ten dollar gift limits, or some people couldn't spend games. more than ten dollars, mm -hmm. and you couldn't buy a gift card, and wow. like. My mother's birthday is November, Christmas is December. I may get her a pedicure for her birthday and then get her a gift card for a new pair of shoes for Christmas. There you go. And see, that's low stress. Like you're buying one thing and it's a low stress thing to do. That's smart. That's really and smart. I've, I mean, I've made it to where everybody in my family, now that there's no little, little kids in my family, gets one kind of wrapping paper. Right. My my father is <laughs> not in a great place. So like last Christmas, I baked him pecan tarts. 
Oh, that's lovely. Then, See, that she's already doing on the list. So she's buying perishables. She's using up her wrapping. She's, um, you know, limiting the number of gifts. Good for you. But, I mean, it it's the friends and the, well, yeah, white elephants and the, you, you know what? My favorite thing to do with white elephants is to go get a tchotchke out of the house and re-gift it. <laughs> That's yes, what ma'am. I uh, attend several groups, um, and they're not uh, mandated to be all ladies, but they are all ladies. Right, right, right. So uh, holiday parties. Yeah. Well, and we have like a, a, a gathering, and I found that I just joined most of these last year, and I found out that even though they may say no gifts. They don't mean it. <laughs> no. and, and they, it, you know, most of them have a gift for every other person. Oh, and oh my what, goodness! What would you say? How would you choose? I, you know, I'm not going to shop for something different for each one. No, 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 but no. How would you choose something that might be appropriate for people who are very, very dissimilar in many ways? My and mother by age as well. Well, I think that um, one of the things I would do is I would look at the idea of perishable stuff, like baking a batch of cookies and making a couple of different kinds and giving everybody a set of cookies. Or I've seen people do things like um, they go buy it the same scarf for everybody, or they go buy the same bottle of hand lotion for everybody, and everybody gets <laughs> vanilla flavored soap or whatever. It either when there's a whole bunch of people, you know, you got to service eight people and they're all in the same group, giving the same gift um, is helpful, it reduces the stress some, and uh, really going for perishables. If you're willing to bake or buy baked goods and divvy them up, buy the cupcakes or whatever, something like that. Yes, ma'am. One of the things that we did with a Christmas party, everyone brought a gift and then say the first person they get the gift and then if the next person wants that same gift or they can choose another gift. Oh yeah, the ceiling gift. Yeah, 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 that's a great idea too. And that way it's only one yeah, gift yeah. per person. Yes ma'am. My mother is in this group where they can only spend like a dollar fifty on each that. person's <laughs> gift. Oh. And so she will buy like and there's only like ten ladies in this group. So she'll buy like everybody a little thing of hand sanitizer or nail yeah, something or something. Little. Well, and, and some of them have it in a little pretty in a little bag. Now, in my family, we reuse gift bags, <laughs> boxes, tissue oh, yeah. paper, sure, clothes until they're dead. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Yeah, and so there's always, you know there's always gift bags around the house. You can always find gift bags to give things away to the group. Or and, you know, whatever the limit that everybody, you know, everybody's going to set some kind of limit. So, and, and really, they may set a limit, but you also need to use a limit that works for your budget, too. Like, just because they say the limit is $20 doesn't mean you can't make the limit 5 if that's what works for your budget. So, the idea is to be less stressful instead of more. So if you want to participate in those events, um, setting a budget that makes you comfortable and shopping in a way that makes you less stressed is the goal. So, and the age, the age old adage, right? The, it's the thought that counts. When you're sitting with a room full of women, they're all crafty chicks. It's the thought that counts. They don't need the stuff, right? You know, if I was going to hang out with the bead girls, I could give them each a tube of beads with a bow on it and call it a day, right? I mean, they would love having the beads. Yeah. It would be $3 or $4, and that'd be the end of it. So, don't, I guess the le what I'm trying to put out here is don't take on their expectations as your expectations. You're, feel free to modify until it's comfortable for you. And if you're in five different groups and you got to buy five groups worth of women, so, f you know, five, ten, fifty people, something, you know, you really have to stop and make a plan about what's not going to break your bank and use up all your energy and make your head explode, right? I think it's time to bake some cookies. <laughs> or go for the, the mini cookies somewhere, oranges. right? The <laughs> exactly. base of oranges. And yeah, right. and Everyone gets to choose. Everybody one. gets an orange, right? <laughs> That's hilarious. 
Yeah, it's it is a very stressful time, and and that's part of why, if you're starting from a cluttered place already, we take the cluttered place that's already stressing you out, and then we heap on a whole bunch of more expectation and activity and to dos, and then you wonder why at the end of the holidays you're wiped out completely and exhausted and a wreck. And so, I just want to encourage you to. Trim the fat where you can. Don't just go through and do things the way you've always done them. Come up with a better plan that is more, that includes more self-care, that thinks about your budget. Like, don't go on a crazy shopping spree. Stop and look at your bank account and look at your bills for the month of December and make sure you realize that you've only got 300 bucks to spend before <coughs> you go shopping and lose your mind. Yes? <laughs> I think there's a big missing piece, which is that for most people, Christmas is not a religious holiday. For some people, yeah. it is, and if it, it and if it is really for you a religious holiday, I think it's really important to make that a part of your yeah your tradition, your celebration, and that's the do the activity participate in the things your church offers mm -hmm. and any activities that are going on there because you know that's you know I, I'm sorry I don't want to you know Jesus is the reason for the season but you know I, you know that's such a cliche but it really but it is the point if, if for you it is a religious holiday yeah. then I think you really need to focus on that and spend not your so time much on, exactly. you know we always make pecan pie and you know I mean you know, that's like a, that's popcorn popcorn that's popcorn 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 popcorn. the problem yeah. with that the yeah. problem with that personally is that I have a sibling who is a minister and so she lives off in Tyler and the rest of us live down here right well no I've got two siblings who live off but anyway and so we go up to her for Christmas so like Christmas oh. Eve service <laughs> is at her church she's the pastor she's conducting it and then the next day she's walked out so mom and i do all the setting and all the you well know, and it might be that it's it's time to have that family conversation about okay this worked when mom was 40 and i was 20 but maybe now it doesn't work for us to do all this stuff maybe we have to dial it down maybe we have we to have change dial it. It. well good or then, alternate, you know, keep you know, dialing alternate years or something mm -hmm. and you can always Buy the dinner from HEB. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a million ways to make and it easier. Are they have Brookshire Brothers. They don't have HEB. But they well, still, they probably will have. Yeah. There's somebody's always cooking, right? So, there's oh, always yeah. somebody. There's sure. always food to buy. Yeah. And I guess well, that's what we do. I mean, like, I'll probably I don't bake in my apartment because my kitchen is teeny tiny and my stove overheats every time I use it. So I don't bake in my kitchen. But there's always food to be had at the holidays, right? There's always somebody that's doing it. Mm -hmm. And people do special things that they don't do at the normal time of year. And so if it's too hard to do it in your own house, if, if you're having to travel at Christmas, you know, I have to I buy gifts based on whether I can get them in my suitcase or not because I'm always going to North Carolina at Christmas. So I can't buy this do it online. present, right? Right. So some of it gets bought online and some of it goes with me in the suitcase. But I make those choices based on... Yeah, that's not really going to work because I can't carry that on the plane. <laughs> and, I, and you know, my family buys for me on the other direction. Like, they can't buy me something big because i got to take it home on the plane or I have to pay to ship it home. Mm -hmm. So we make that plan based on, on my circumstance, which is I'm traveling for the holidays. And that's also why I don't decorate very much because I'm not going to be there. <laughs> you know, when you be, would normally be experiencing them, I am going to be in another state. I will be missing them completely. So my little sister has that burden right now. Yes. Two things. One, an activity that little people and big people like is yeah. making Christmas cookies. Ah. And everybody in the, you know, the creativity. A baking event games, right? in the house. And the other is if you have someone, say, for whom um, Christmas Eve <coughs> going to church is their big thing, is to offer to go with them. And that would be a gift. Oh, your that's time. true. And it's very important to them. Mm -hmm. to a cookie swap is good. Mm -hmm. That too, yeah. right? See, those are all great things. And see, that'd be something you could tell the crafty chicks to do. Let's do a cookie swap this year instead. Mm -hmm. And buying gifts, and you can swatch them out. Well, I'm probably the least crafty. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. What but I'm you trying to no. say is, like, you have 
at someone's house a thing where everybody brings a different kind of cookie. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. Whatever the group, whatever your groups are about, yeah. tell them you can trade cookies this year, or let's make it easy and everybody can trade cookies. Or if you've got 40 people, bring 40 cookies. Right? And then everybody will have a, a tray of different cookies. Everybody, oh my God. <laughs> then they'd have to let their relatives eat them all. Well, somebody's going to eat them. Right? It's <laughs> going to be me. I'm going to be the one eating the cookies. Okay, I, uh, it is 8 o'clock, so I want to go ahead and wrap up for today. Thank you so much for coming, and uh, you guys can stay afterwards for more questions. Bye.